Welcome to another video. I have a problem here that took me at least two or three days to figure out how to answer because when I first took this integral, uh, yeah, I was able to take the indefinite integral without evaluating. But when I decided to evaluate, I just could not get natural log of four. And MIT says the answer is the natural log of four, but I kept getting infinity. Now, this is why I thought I was right. The graph of this function looks like this. Because the function is not defined at one, but you're supposed to evaluate as one. So I know, yeah, I know that this is an improper integral. I had to take the limit, but even when you take the limit, it goes to infinity. <laughs> That's the problem, but it's still natural log of four. So after a while, I was able to figure it out. So before you watch this video or at some point, I want you to try it and see if you go straight to natural log of four. Let's get into the video. Because this is an improper integral, I am going to ignore the boundaries for now, and I'm just going to take the indefinite integral, then at the end of the day, I will evaluate. So, see what's going to happen. I am going to, this is a pure, this is purely a function of natural log, so um, I have to do integration by parts because I don't know how to integrate, so I'll find a situation where I can differentiate this and then integrate dx. That's all I'm going to do. Um, so, I can say, since I will be differentiating this, I'll say, I'm not using di table this time, I'll say let u be ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And let um, v, let dv be equal to dx. So that u prime, which would be my du, let me write du, will be equal to the derivative of this, and v will be the integral of dx, which is just x. So what will du be? That's all I'm looking for now. Well, let's do the work here. I'm going to erase it because this is going to take a while. So I'm trying to differentiate ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Now, there are two ways to differentiate this. You can do um, logarithmic differentiation. Let me use that here now. Let me use it. So, so if you want ddx of this will be ddx because I can rewrite this as natural log of 1 plus x plus minus the natural log of 1 minus x, okay? That's logarithmic differentiation. And if I differentiate this, it's the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. So it's going to be 1 over 1 plus x minus the derivative of this is minus 1 over 1 minus x. So the negative here will be, change this into a plus. Let's write it here. So this is going to be 1 over 1 plus x plus 1 over 1 minus x. So let's get a common denominator for both of them and we're going to have 1 plus x. Actually, the common denominator, okay, 1 plus x times 1 minus x and then we're going to have 1 minus x here plus 1 plus x. That's what we get here. And this will be 1 minus x plus 1 plus x over... This is difference of two squares, 1 minus x squared. So if we take care of the top, 1, that's 2. And this minus x plus x will erase each other and then you have just 2 over 1 minus x squared. So that's the derivative of this natural log function. Now we're going to bring this here and this is our du which is 2. So now we need to write our answer which means we're going to have this integral will be equal to uv, remember integration by parts. What we had here was originally u dv. Our answer will be uv u times v which is x times ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Um, and then we're going to have minus the integral of v du. Where is v? 
and this is du. So you multiply this by this, that's going to give you 2x over 1 minus x squared dx. Actually, this should have a dx. Okay, maybe that's better. Okay, so because this was d dx and this is our u. Okay, so now we need to integrate this, but this is easy to integrate because you can make this your u and the derivative of 1 minus x squared is minus 2x. So 2x dx is showing up already. So u substitution will save us here. So we, oh, we can do u substitution. Let's do t. So we can, no, t, let's do t for now. Or let's do v, v substitution. So we can say, let v be equal to 1 minus x squared. Okay, then it means that dv equals minus 2x dx, which is what you have here. So we can have this answer to be equal to um, x times ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x minus this integral will now be written in terms of v. It's going to be, this is just v and this is dv. Oh, we can bring the minus here and remove it from here so that minus dv is 2x dx. So this is going to be minus the integral of minus dv over v. So this is just natural log of v if we answer it. Let's get rid of this. So if we decide to integrate this right now, it's just going to be this minus will change this into a plus. Okay, I'm just going to do it here because I don't want to rewrite it. So now that's what we have. But we know that this is natural log of v. So our answer eventually is equal to x ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x plus the natural log of v. But what did we say v was? v is 1 minus x squared, right? So it's the natural log of 1 minus x squared, okay, uh, plus c. So this is the answer to the indefinite integral. In fact, we can rewrite this to be like this. It's going to be x times the natural log of um, 1 plus x. So I'm going to split this now, watch, minus the natural log of 1 minus x. Okay, I'm trying to make the work easy because this is how the answer showed up. Any other way you try to evaluate this from 0 to 1 is not going to work. Okay, let me show you why. Let's say you try to evaluate this now, this answer I got, and you plug in 0. If you plug in 0 here, you're going to have 0 times, this is going to be 1 over 1, so this is 0. Everything here is 0, and this is natural log of 1, which is 0, so 0 is never a problem because the graph of this function actually looks like this. And this goes from minus 1, this is minus 1, to plus 1. But th this, this is an asymptote, and this line never meets this, so you cannot really integrate to the very end. Well, this declines over time, but you don't see that. So what happens is 0 is in the domain, but 1 is not in the domain, minus 1 is not in the domain. So when it comes to plugging in 1, you cannot, because once you plug it in, you get infinity, unless you now do a one-sided limit, and even a one-sided limit was taking me to infinity. Okay, so, but see what's going to happen. It is some transformation here that's going to make it very easy for you to take the limit, because you can evaluate at 0, or as, t goes to, as x goes to 0, but we need to evaluate as not a one-sided limit now. We just want to evaluate as x goes to 1. So we can also split this, and it becomes plus the natural log of x. Sorry, this is going to be difference of 2 squares 2, which is going to be 1, um, 1 plus x. Um, Oh, let's just do natural log of 1, okay, natural log of 1 plus x minus the natural log of 1 minus x, okay? So this is what you have for this one. You can write it this way. Now, no, it's plus. Come on, it's plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the terms with 1 plus x together and all the terms with 1 minus x together and then try to evaluate, okay? So this is the same thing as x ln 1 plus x, then I'm going to bring this guy closer, 
it's going to be plus natural log of 1 plus x. Okay, and then I'm going to have this to be minus x natural log of 1 minus x plus natural log of 1 minus x. So what do I get? These two will give me x plus 1 times the natural log of 1 plus x minus natural log of 1 minus x. There you go. Okay, so that's it. So this is the situation, and I have the plus c, but because I'm going to, okay, let's do plus c. But now if we take the limit, if we now evaluate this, what it's gonna look like will be, we bring back this integral. So the integral from zero to one of ln, this answer evaluated from, so it's gonna be equal to the limit as, I'm gonna use um, t, as t goes to one, because we can plug in one, okay, because it's not defined that one is an improper integral, the limit as t goes to one of this answer we just got, which is x plus one times ln of one plus x minus x minus one times ln of one minus x. Plus c is not relevant because when you subtract the two, you're gonna get nothing. So I'm gonna ignore the plus c. Actually, I'm gonna take it out. It's not important because it's a definite integral. Now, with this, I am going to evaluate from zero to t. What do you think is gonna happen? If I plug in zero, see what happens. This gives me zero plus one times the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero, so everything here is zero. If I plug in zero here, it's gonna be um, one times the natural log of one. This is also zero. So <clears throat> everything becomes zero. So the zero is gone. The main issue is the t. So let's see what happens. If I plug in t, this expression is going to become the limit as t approaches one of, this becomes t plus one, t plus one times ln of one plus t minus t minus one times ln of one minus t. That's all we need now. We need to evaluate this limit. Unfortunately, t is approaching one. So if we plug in t equals one here, this is gonna be one plus one, that's two, times the natural log of one plus t, one, which is, so this is gonna be equal to, so if I split the limit, this is gonna give me two ln two minus, if I take the limit to this side, it's gonna be the limit as t approaches one of, what would this be? It's gonna be t minus one times ln of one minus t. The problem is t minus, this is gonna be zero and this is gonna be natural log of zero. But as t approaches one, this approaches zero and means this goes to negative infinity. So as you can see, it's zero times negative infinity. It's an indeterminate form. And that's where the problem comes in. And whenever you have indeterminate form in limit, you have to use L'Hopital's rule if there's no other way, especially in this case, L'Hopital's rule is the way out. So that's the reason why I couldn't get my answer. It kept taking me to infinity because negative infinity times this will become positive infinity plus whatever you're adding to it is gonna take you to infinity. But L'Hopital's rule, if you write it this way, this is the only way you could write it so you can see that indeterminate form. Otherwise, it will just be infinity. If you had written this as a ratio, it would have been infinity. So this is the form. Now we need to write this in a way that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And it means I may have to go back 
somewhere here and do the work. So what I'm going to do is continue from this. I'm going to erase the top and we'll see how we get the answer. So I'm going to say, consider this limit. As t goes to 1, this is going to give me the form 0 times negative infinity. Okay, this is indeterminate form. So we have to find a way to apply L'Hopital's rule, which means I will rewrite this expression. I'm going to, I need infinity over infinity, or I need 0 over 0. Right now, this I cannot change. This is infinity. So I can change this into something else. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule and say, by L'Hopital's rule, this will be equal to the, the limit as t goes to 1 of the natural log of 1 minus t divided by 1 over t minus 1. Okay, this is exactly that because I can easily flip this and take it back up to where it is. But this is what I need and this is what I need to differentiate. Okay, so I'm going to say by L'Hopital's rule, it is the derivative of each of these. And what do I get? If I take the derivative of this, what does it give me? The derivative of any natural law function is going to be the derivative of the argument negative 1 over 1 minus t. That's what's there. Okay, divided by, what's the derivative of this? It's going to be um, negative 1 over the square of this t minus 1 squared. That's the derivative. So the two negative ones will cancel out. Let's keep going. And then what do I have? So the negative ones will cancel out. This one flips up and you end up with just t minus 1. Right? Because if you multiply the top and bottom by t minus 1 squared. So watch this. Multiply by t minus 1 squared. t minus 1 squared. This will cancel this out, you have negative 1. This will take out one of these. So what's left is just the limit as t goes to 1 of t minus 1. And plugging in 1, you get 0. Nice. <laughs> so that means this actually is 0. This entire part is 0. So this is equal to, if I move this to up here, it becomes the natural log of 2 squared minus 0, which is the natural log of four. That's where the answer came from. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.